Lisa Paperco, 25 Highland Drive, Wilkes Barre. Good evening. I want to discuss the issues within the city regarding the financial problems. In opening, I would like to ask, why is the mayor asking for concessions from the city's labor unions, asking for volunteers to take layoffs, and threatening across the board layoffs when he has been saying all along that they were financially strong? First, I have documentation here that shows that there is approximately $7.5 million due on or by November 5th, 15, 2012, just for bonds payable. In addition, you have a $4,135,000 tax anticipation note due for a loan on anticipated taxes. This is from information I have gathered that is available to the public. Perhaps there are real numbers available that contradict what I have found. Second, how much is owed on the MMO for this year, which is due this month? From the information I can see, the city must come up with over $12 million if you add up all the bonds due, the note due, plus the MMO. How can you therefore continue to blame the $1.2 million shortfall from Syntax? You will receive that. If you wanted the money now, you could have filed a claim with Syntax Bond Agency if you have not already done so. Now regarding recent events, let me say that before the administration asked for the employees who serves the citizens of the city of Wolfsburg to give up concessions or take layoffs, what is the administration and council giving up? The mayor and all other elected officials should set the tone for seriousness of our financial crisis by immediately having their pay suspended. Your job is not a necessity. Therefore, any employees who directly serve the citizens get laid off. You should remove all your part-time employees followed by city hall. Further, why do we need a mayoral assistant spokesperson? Cannot our city administrator act on this regard where she has in the past? How about the man up at DPW who has been reputedly stealing fuel and misusing city equipment for years? Lay him off and let the operations manager run the show. Further, why do we employ two lawyers? The city charter states we should only have one. One of those should be eliminated. Those employees who are on the police, fire, DPW, code enforcement inspections are needed. Have we gone through the accounts payables to see what needs to be removed? Get rid of the perks. Cut areas such as our $50,000 per year cell phone bill. Council travel, which I have been seeing for nearly a year, is unnecessary. Not to mention the cost of our memberships in the National League of Cities and PA League of Cities which at this point are an unnecessary expense. I want to ask if this council, if they're going to make employees held accountable by creating an ordinance to hold everyone accountable for their city vehicles, logging in their fuel, keeping logs of daily vehicle activity that includes the driver, destination, beginning and ending mileages, all on a daily basis. This should be handled, handed in on a monthly basis and reconciled with the ending odometer of every vehicle. I still contend that no employee should take home city-owned vehicles. I really would like to know what council and the administration are going to give up in these trying financial times, or are your budgets sacred? Last, I would like to ask council, if you know of this impending financial cliff, we are going off months, as the mayor has stated he did, while sitting in this very chamber telling me how great a financial shape we are in, which I stated a year ago, and we were not. In closing, I am curious to see if any of you will respond or sit there and maintain your culture of silence when it comes to your citizens. Thank you. Can you take a comment? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Yeah, you might be uh, better able to answer some of those questions. I was just going to uh, <coughs> thank you for bringing those issues to our attention. However, we are aware of uh, a lot of what you're saying. A lot of it is true as far as uh, debts owed and pending uh, payments and those types of things. And uh, the mayor, I'm sure, can uh, best answer how we are going to handle those. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the personnel issues, I believe that the administration is how they're going to be structured, but I do regret it. 
we have heard. There is talk about restructuring, reassignment positions, those types of things. And uh, I, I think that uh, that's a very strong possibility. I know if I speak any further, I can speak without a fact. So we'll leave that in there. First, I've always said how bad the city was, and that's why I'm very proud of the credit rating, getting a credit rating under the conditions we face every year. Uh, so, Karen, have you ever worked in government? Yes, I have. Where are <coughs> At a uh, Huntington Township. Yeah. How long were you employed there for? Uh, approximately two and a half years. And why did you leave? Why did I leave? Relevance. Back that's and forth. That's not relevant to. No, I'm just. I don't know. Did you leave? You didn't like government, or I mean, government's very difficult to work. With. No, it was it was actually a personal matter. Okay, so you you know what it's like to work in a government. Yes, I do. And you, you know that working in a government pretty much what goes on inside the building, what makes the town run, the municipality, the township, the borough, right? Yes. This administration has cut more positions in city hall than any other mayor since I became the mayor. We cut to attrition. We are, going to, we are in a difficult time, one for the recession, the economy's terrible, people are unemployed, so wage, the wage tax is down, real estate transfer tax is down because the real estate market's soft. It's not only here, it's everywhere. Wilkes-Barre is not on an island right now. We stayed off the island. You look around, you locally have one of the towns in the community look at stress. You have the bigger community, you have Scranton, you have the Allentown, you have the Reddings, you have the Harrisburg. Uh, Harrisburg, our state capital, is bankrupt, not distressed. They're in bankruptcy. We've done so much in this government with the cooperation of four unions. So we're getting great cooperation from our union leadership. Uh, and we're hoping that we get it from the members. And if we don't, you will see some serious cuts. Some departments will be cut more severely than others. And we've always been very proud of what we've accomplished on the financial side during difficult times. And we have a credit rating that many towns don't have. It's on a credit watch right now because of a condition that was not created by this administration or this council. And we, we cut and cut and cut to the bare bone. And if we have to cut more, some cuts are going to be very severe. Some of the departments we get very hard. And we will we'll be there, you know, we'll incur a voluntary layoff from our members. My senior staff is willing to do it. Somebody has to be in this building to make all the other departments run, whether it's the fire department, whether it's the police department, whether it's DPW. All those departments are pretty much run from within the city hall by respect of the department. Without the department heads, those departments don't run. And you know, we run a very efficient government. It's something we're very proud of. So the condition that most period is right now does not happen overnight. We've been watching for years. And we've come a long way from where we were in 2004. It's something I'm proud of, something my administration's proud of, and some councilors that were here. So we've never hidden the fact you you could look at a newspaper article. There was a newspaper article last year, this time the time later, that I told about how difficult the city is. Uh, running the city because of recession. So there's been some tough times and they're getting tougher. It's not anybody's fault. It's, it's the recession, it's the economy, and we're doing the best we can under some very difficult conditions. And you working in government knows what it's like. You know how people, the taxpayers, the residents, the business community, they expect and demand services that we provide. And we're hoping we continue to continue to provide those services. But they're, you know, they're probably like I spoke with the press for the last three days. We've been working on this since July. So it's been no secret. We've met with uh, union leadership. And we're hoping to get cooperation. If we don't, we will see some drastic cuts. What are you willing to give up yourself, Mr. Mayor? Mr. The mayor has not taken a pay increase in six years. We have, in my administration, not the highest paid salary employees in the city of Wilkesbury. The mayor may not know. But you also have another business to fall back on where you can take benefits and stuff from your and own I business. And I employ people on that business. And as the, as the members, as the other employees in the city of there have other ways to fall back make it money and, and do other business on the side. But if you're asking for pay cuts, why not why not take the lead here and I say, did. I'm willing to take a pay cut, not a pay raise, but a pay cut. Well, technically, by not taking my pay raise that I was entitled to and by showing leadership, I pay them. Pay. We pay health care now. We did not pay health care until I became the mayor. Nobody paid. Now we have health care co-payments in every with every city employee. Something that would never happen prior to this administration taking over. So we, I pay health care every year. Something the previous mayors did not. So you know, look, we could sit here and discuss this all night. But I'm already led by taking a pay, uh, a pay freeze. 
Now we're asking our, our members, our, our employees to do it. And, you know, right now we're not getting cooperation, but I already did it, I think it was six years ago. So I led when times were tough, by example. The unfortunate thing, council followed, but there was no other followers. So now the time where, you know, I'm telling you, you know, and the union leadership knows. You know, they discuss this with other unions locally and throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Times are tough. We're not, we're not the first to do this. But you continue to go ahead and borrow more and more on um, projects. Borrow? What did we borrow? How did we borrow? You, when I was when I was away, you you went ahead and approved six million dollars on some project to Schneider Electric for which project? The Johnson. I'm sorry, yeah. Johnson. And how are we going to pay that back? See, see, Karen, this is where you're misinformed. That's why I want to know your government. Working for the government is much different than working in private industry. How are we going to pay that back? Well, if Where's you're in financial time? stress at this point in time, you're you're going ahead and getting more loans explain and pulling more away for services just, within our city. Just explain Johnson Controls Project. Johnson Control Projects is supposedly supposed to Gender save 20. us money for lighting, uh, save us money for. Um, and, and that's that's another thing I wasn't going to bring up because I was away that you guys had already approved, so I thought it was a dead issue. But it's supposed to save money in the long run. However, you have to go ahead and get a loan to go ahead and and get all this stuff done, send in the paperwork. I know how grants and stuff work. Okay, um, from my understandings, when they went ahead and built the fire the fire station down in Hollenbeck. You guys had the opportunity back then, which I believe was the old chief, that decided not to go ahead and go through with the savings and the cost savings that would have been included in with the grants. Well, explain the cost savings back then. There was there were supposed to be floor floor uh, heating. There was a lot of things that was removed from the initial um, the, the initial startup. There was uh, all kinds of cost cost savings that was supposed to be involved. Uh, possibly a, a I, I can't recall at this point in time because I don't have all the people working in front of me. But there was supposed to it would it would have been paid for by the grant monies and we chose not to go through that route because it would cost too much money if something would have happened that something broke in the floor with the heating elements or whatever, it would cost too much money to go ahead and, you know, fix. So there was a lot of things there that was, you so know. So if it cost too much money to fix, then how would we fix it if broke? But Butch will be able to explain to you what we did, because that's the state of our facility that what we had done, that was funded through the Community Development Office, 100%. It was, a, that's, that's, a, that's money that is used for uh, community development. A certain number of projects. That facility came in under budget. It was initially going to be something like a million dollars. You got it done for seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. Everything at the time that was built, I believe, it was two thousand and six. Yeah. I think something like two thousand and six was everything in that facility at the time was state of the art. Now, I just so you understand, we've already gone through an energy savings project here with another company. That the, the things that they uh, put here in the city of Wilkesbury to save money on energy have now been are outdated now. Johnson Controls is coming in here, and they're going to fund this project with savings. In fact, the first payment on the loan that we're going to take to, to, to pay this back comes from the savings. They sit on this project for one whole year. This is a guaranteed energy savings by one of the largest companies in the country, and they're global. Uh, I, spent, I spent months on this, and when, when I'm telling you it's a project that the city looks very needs desperately, it really is. We're going to save a lot of money. We're going to update a lot of uh, uh, facilities here that need to be updated. And so one of the only ways we get funded without having to take general fund money to do so. But you go ahead and you have stuff like this that you have uh, cost savings where you're doing the electric. Let's say uh, you're putting in um, the electric and the lights come on automatically because um, you walk in the room and then they shut off because there's no, there's no that's one of the, some of the things that like they're small. supposed to be doing. Yes. But why can't we have our, we have an electrician within uh, City Hall, why can't he go ahead and start installing these things himself instead of spending the six million dollars utilizing our inside resources instead of outsourcing things all the time? We have one electrician on uh, a city staff, one electrician. 
the companies that will be doing this work are, there, there's, there's dozens of them that are going to be bidding on this work. The first thing that we're going to do is change 4,200 Cobra lights in the city of Worcester. That Cobra lights. That is going to save them. That's, that's the most significant savings here. First of all, the work in that area, the FC qualified work in a power zone. Our, our electrician does not. We don't have the ability to do this work. It is a, it, it's, there would be 30 or 40 people working on that project. The same thing at police headquarters. We, we don't have anybody here on staff that can do that work, and I don't know why anybody thinks we, we would be able to retain those people. Uh, it, it's professional, unionized employees are going to be doing this work. Four Johnson controls through the city of Wilson. We will have enough effort here from our electrician to, to make sure that he's up to speed on how this, this new system works. He will be working very closely with these people. When we did this in City Hall and other areas, we won a national award back in 2007. In fact, it's in the case outside the law. So the national award, we won the fire for. So we were, we were ahead of the game and we're just continuing this. The police station right now, the meeting and air system is down. The Johnson Controls has come in. If we didn't do this program, we'd have to use general fund money uh, that we don't have to replace the heating and air on the police station. So it's actually not costing the taxpayers any money because the the loan, the debt being paid back with the energy savings, and there should be a surplus at the end that we go in with it. This is a win-win for us, so I don't think you got all the information. And it's not something that happened overnight. We've been working on this thing since June. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you.